On Thursday morning, Bon Temps, you had the story about some of the things that you uh, took away from seeing a bunch of the Eastern contenders. Um, and you should check that story out. There's stuff in there about the Raptors and the Cavs and uh, Malcolm Brogdon, none of which we're going to talk about right now. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about your takeaway from the 76ers who lost to the Raptors on Wednesday night. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Wait, are the Sixers Wednesday in that story? Because you said it was about contenders. Mm. They are. Bontemps. They were nominally contenders to start the season, I, at least in my as as I picked them first to win the most games in the goddamn league. I certainly thought they were going to be good. Uh, good call. Yeah. I mean, listen, this has been an unmitigated disaster. I mean, everybody wants to talk about how bad the Nets and the, and the Lakers are and have looked. Those teams were going to be bad. Anybody who was rational looking at them knew those teams weren't going to be very good. The Sixers team was supposed to be a great team had added mm -hmm. PJ Tucker to a mix with Tyrese Maxey, James Harden in the backcourt with Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid in the front court. They, they boost the depth on the bench, getting DeAnthony Melton and Daniel house. Um, you know, they have Montrez Harrell who should have been a good regular season player for them. It seemed like this was a team that was set up to win a whole ton of regular season games. And then they come out and look, the first two games, they play Boston and Milwaukee. They didn't play great, but they were fine. Like those are okay. Losses mm -hmm. ultimately, but then get beat down on their home court by the Spurs. They struggle to beat the Pacers on Monday, eventually pull away, but win that game. And then they go to Toronto last night and just get run off the court again. No energy throughout the game, getting toasted in fast break situations again. Um, the beginning of the game, they just did not guard Pascal Siakam. Let him just get one wide open three after another. I mean, this is a team that, you know, and they keep saying, oh, we need more time. We need to gel. We need things to come together. Like, I'm sorry. The four main guys on the team mm -hmm. all spent the last four months of last season together. This is not like there's 12 new players on the team and you have to get this thing figured out. You're not even like in Brooklyn where Ben Simmons hadn't played in a year and a half and he needed time to, you know, in theory, knock some rust off. This is a group that should have hit the ground running, talked about how great their preseason was, talked about how well, things were coming together and then the season started and they just look like a completely disjointed, disorganized group, a classic, you know, in baseball, they call it 25 guys, 25 calves. They look like that kind of team on the court, no energy, no cohesion, no communication. I mean, it's been really an unmitigated disaster and they're really lucky that the Phillies are in the world series and the Eagles have the, are the lone undefeated team in the NFL because there's already heat on Doc Rivers' job a week into the season. Mm -hmm. And if those two things were not going on, they'd be all anybody in Philadelphia was talking about right now. Yeah, and the you know the one new starter that they have is P.J. Tucker, who's the ultimate complimentary piece. It's not like P.J., oh, well, you know, we've really got to work him. In. No, he's going to go right. stand in the corner. That's right. And he'll, he'll shoot open threes, move the ball, and guard the other team's best player. It's not like you've really got to, oh, you know, Got to get PJ in a rhythm. Right. That, that's not the world he lives in. And, you know, obviously it's a, this is probably premature stuff and it's a gossip league and all that, but you're starting to hear the murmurs. Oh, you know, boy, how long's in, you know, how long before Embiid starts to, to, you know, get an itch and, you know, maybe think about uh, greener pastures, this, that, and the other. I'll, I'll say this. The good thing is if that happens, the Sixers appear to be well positioned to replace him with Victor. Um, well, that so. is not true, actually. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. My joke the, fell flat because they don't own all their the, pick. Well, yeah, of all the teams to actually own their pick, it is the Brooklyn Nets as part of the James Harden trade. So. No, it's the, isn't it the Utah Jazz? No, it's the Nets. The Nets, I believe, still have their pick. I have to double check that, though. I thought that one checked it. I, I, think, one... I, think they, I think they traded a different pick, but I'm going to double check it right now while we're talking. Anyways, Either way, um, whoever has their pick, it ain't. It ain't the Sixers. <laughs> that I can uh, promise you. Yes. Uh, and, you know, you hear there's, well, you know, Joel had plantar fasciitis all summer. It's like the, the Sixers pick is, is in Brooklyn, but I don't know if it's protected. I'm not sure what the protection is. I'm looking it up right now while we're talking. When, when, when did MB get this plantar fasciitis all summer? Isn't that usually a, a, an ailment that you get when you're actually like doing something? It, it, did he get like he? There was some especially abrasive sand on the beach that he was vacationing on, and suddenly developed a, 
case of plantar fasciitis midseason. But you know that's the excuse for him uh, showing up not in what we would refer to as peak condition. Um, obviously, the transition defense is a total mess. A lot of that's because sometimes Embiid crosses half court. Sometimes he doesn't. Uh, we can talk about conditioning there. I think we can also talk about um, his mood. <laughs> when, when Embiid ain't happy, uh, he's not hustling. So the official the official word on this on this pick is uh, Houston gets the more favorable pick between uh, its pick and Brooklyn's pick. And Brooklyn will receive the more favorable pick of either the of, of whatever that pick is in Philadelphia's pick. So, in other words, Houston. In other words, Houston will wind up with the best pick in that deal. I think, regardless of how it shakes out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.